Greetings! It's Maxo Diddly, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can remove prefab overrides in Unity. Let's get right into it. So I've got a prefab here, and it's got some components and some values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop an instance of the prefab into my scene, and then I'm going to change some of the values. So for the X we'll do 2, for the Y we're going to do minus 2, and for the sprite, I'm going to drag and drop a rock onto it instead. And for the strength, I'll do 254. HP, I'll do 21. Name, I'll do Bob. And value, I'm going to do 2. And then I'm going to save my work. But let's say we go back into the prefab. And we want to now change the values in this prefab. So strength, we'll do 26. We'll do 11 HP. Value will be 1 and name will be Prism. And we want to use this All Pal sprite instead. And we want the position to be free and free. And then we save the prefab. And then we go into Unity. And none of those changes have occurred. This is the problem that I'm going to show you how you can solve. And it requires making an editor script. So the first step is, if you don't have an editor folder, you need to make one. So you need to right click on your assets folder, go to create, and then go to folder. And call it editor. And once you've made the folder, you need to open it up. And then you want to right click, go to create, and then go to C sharp script. And we're going to call it restore prefabs default. And then you want to open up the script in Visual Studio. So I'm going to have the script in the description below so you can copy and paste it, but I will go over what the script does. So firstly, we're going to do hashtag if Unity Editor, then we'll do using Unity Engine and using Unity Editor. At the bottom of our code, we'll also do hashtag end if, and this will be on the final line. And the if statement with the hashtags is a preprocessor directive that ensures the code within it only compiles and run in the Unity editor and not in a built game, which is required, no, which is a good idea to do because if we try to run this code on a build of the game and not an editor, you're going to encounter issues. Then we're going to do two things. We'll do menu item, tools slash revert overrides on selected prefab, and then public static void revert prefab overrides. So this we're making our static function to revert the prefab overrides to the default values on the prefab. And here, with our menu item, this attribute creates a menu in Unity's top menu under tools, and it allows users to trigger the revert prefab overrides function in the Unity editor. And inside we'll do game object selected object equals selection dot active game object. And if it's equal to null, we can then do a debug log warning and then return. Basically, we're going to check if we have selected an object in the hierarchy in the scene. And if we haven't, then we don't want to try doing anything else because it's not going to work because there's no object selected. And then we're going to do prefab utility dot revert prefab instance, selected object and interaction mode dot user action. And basically, this command reverts all overrides except from the transform on the selected prefab instance, restoring component values to match the prefab. And the interaction.user action means this operation will be recorded in Unity's undo history, so we could hit Ctrl Z on the keyboard to undo this if we wanted to. Then we're going to do game object prefab source equals prefab utility dot get corresponding object from source selected object. So this retrieves the original prefab asset associated with the selected instance so its transform values can be copied over. And then we're going to check if it's null. If it is null, then we do a log warning to let us know we can't locate the original prefab. Otherwise, we're going to do undo.record object, selected object.transform, and revert transform to prefab. And this allows for changes made to the transform which would be the position, rotation, and scale to be undoable within the editor. Basically, we can control Z if we make a mistake or want to undo it. And after that, we then want to set the transform to match the prefab. So we can do selected object.transform.position equals prefab source.transform.position. 
And then we do selected object dot transform dot position equals prefab source dot transform dot rotation. And then we can do selected object dot transform dot local scale equals prefab source dot transform dot local scale. We are setting the position, rotation, and local scale to be equal to that in the prefab. And then we can do debug log dollar sign speech mark curly bracket selected object dot name curly bracket has been reverted to prefab defaults including transform. And that's all of the code we have to do. And you might be thinking, but why do we have to do something different to revert the transform while well, basically everything else works just fine with revert prefab instance? And basically, it reverts everything apart from the transform position and rotation of a root game object in a prefab instance. And that's all you have to do for this script. So you can save your work and go back into Unity. And you might notice something immediately. There is now a tools option up here, and if we click on it, we can then see a revert overrides on selected prefab. So if we click on this while there's no prefab, we just get a warning message telling us that there's no prefab selected. So if we just click on our object, then we go to tools, then we go to revert overrides on selected prefab. Look at that. It's now adopted all of the values of the prefab. And there's one thing I want to just quickly show you. So I'm going to make another version of this prefab. And I will set the value to be 0, 0. And then I will change this to this. And then this I'll also change the value of. And maybe do a minus 3. And then I'll save my work. And then I'll click on this one here and go to tools. And as you can see, it will only revert the object you have selected so it's not going to undo all overrides on every single instance only the one that you have selected so thanks for being a great audience be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials thanks for watching